I have been doing videos about women and women and girls conditions around the globe. So let's make a stop in Saudi Arabia. This is Rahaf Mohammed, and she hit the news back in early 2019 when she was attempting to escape her family, her Saudi Arabian family, and was seeking asylum. This is a long article from The Guardian, and I'm not going to highlight the whole thing, but this talks about her escape and why she escaped. In early 2019, an 18-year-old Saudi woman, Rahaf Mohammed, snuck out of her family hotel room in Kuwait and bought a plane ticket to Bangkok, beginning the most extraordinary journey of her young life. The welcome she received, however, met her deepest fear. With her father and brother in hot pursuit and Thai airport authorities working in collaboration with the Saudi embassy, all determined to send her back. Mohammed barricaded herself in an airport hotel room and took a deep breath and decided to tell her story to the world. Using the smartphone that had been her only respite from a windowless, repressive existence in the conservative heartland of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed detailed her plight in a series of posts on Twitter. If she was forcibly returned, she would disappear or be unalive, she, she wrote. She needed immediate help to apply for asylum. The maelstrom that followed involved the governments of five countries, as well as the UN, drawing attention of the world's media to a vulnerable woman in a stark impasse in a faraway land. In the weeks and months that followed, her ordeal was also cast a spotlight on her homeland, a place where rebels, such as her, were still a source of immense shame and young women remained barely seen or heard. This is where I want to talk about the cultural um, phenomenon in Saudi Arabia. In, re in regional Saudi Arabia, the cultural reforms announced over the past five years have yet to cut through. Archaic traditions have kept women as chattel, um, remain steadfast beliefs among Rahaf's family. Her brothers in the city played with friends on the streets, made their own decisions, and monitored her phone. Rahaf, meanwhile, couldn't sit on a balcony, go to the mall without a guardian, or even speak. Yeah. So women and girls were repressed. Obviously, this is, well, this is the Middle East. And then she cut her hair and she was also into girls. She knew she was into girls early, which is obviously a no-no and repressive and cultural Muslim, um, Islam. So she was treated as the family curse, but her father, let's talk about that. Her father, meanwhile, took a second wife, then a third, both much younger than their anguished mother who seemed to wreak havoc, wreck her wrath on her rebellious daughter. Her country's beliefs leave no room for critical thinking and they punish women like her with stoning or unaliving. This will need a part two. Let's get into this a little bit more. I kind of skimmed over it before. In a debut book aptly titled Rebel, Muhammad details a confused and often painful childhood that had no place for a free spirit such as hers, indoctrinated into Wahhabis belief that offered no room for critical thinking and viewed emancipation as subversion, punishable by stoning or death. She was miserable at an early age, even more so when she caught glimpses of how other girls lived. On trips to Turkey and Dubai, she saw foreigners, the curves of women wearing dresses, and found music and laughter. She dared to dream that the same freedoms could be hers. As a teenager, she began to test her boundaries at home in Saudi Arabia. More beatings from her brothers followed. She was ostracized and, fur and further tormented by her. The small screen that acted as her lifeline to the world helped connect her with others who had escaped. A few Saudi girls who had managed to break the shackles and start independent lives abroad. Rahaf began making plans and the next family holiday to Kuwait was the time to put them into motion. Okay, so now you guys can um, look up the rest of her story or look up her book Rebel if you want to. I have spent a few, um, I've spent some time looking at some of the, the YouTube clips of other Saudi Arabian girls who have escaped and attempted to go through Hong Kong, which is another repressive country, to try to escape to Australia. And these countries... Um, they know that girls are trying to escape and they work sometimes in tandem with the Saudi Arabian government and the male guardians. 
some of these YouTube stories that I have um, watched have been heartbreaking of the girls who don't escape and whose families are able to get them back and send them back to Saudi Arabia. Um, even if they have been abused um, physically or sexually, when they try to escape, they are basically ostracized and locked away. These repressive um, religious countries really just think of women and girls as property to be to do whatever with and it is extremely sad to see the conditions that women and girls go through and the fact that we are second-class citizens in some places just depending on the the countries that we are born in so this is just my trip around the world looking at the conditions of women and girls. You guys like, comment, share. Tell me what you think. Let's keep this conversation going.